date is February the 1st, 2018. My name is Charlie Mars. I'm with the American Space Museum here in Titusville, Florida. I have Jerry Roberts and Don Arabian. Will's up Arabian over here on my far left. And I'm sure you remember why he's called. Will's up. Oh, he, may, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he might not remember that. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> well, as you can see, we, uh, we go back quite a ways. <clears throat> back to the Mercury program. And we were associated over the years with Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Shuttle. I think by the time Space Station came along, along and Constellation, we were sort of doing other things, but maybe did some consulting there. But today we're going to do some world histories and pick up some things that happened many years ago, some things that were traumatic, some things that were exhilarating, and that's sort of been the careers throughout NASA trying to go into space and come back again. But let's start quickly with uh, the background from Jerry. Jerry, where were you born and raised? And I was uh, born and raised in a small town in northeast Arkansas. Uh, graduated from high school in, in uh, 51. Worked for Western Electric uh, installing dial telephone exchanges for a couple years as a technician. And then uh, on my 19th birthday, I got greetings from Uncle Sam, and uh, I went to the, uh, uh, the Korean War. Uh, I was lucky, didn't get into, didn't get into uh, combat in Korea, but uh, uh, I, got, I was discharged then in 1955 and started a college uh, in 1959, I guess it was in February, McDonnell Aircraft got the, uh, the contract for the Mercury spacecraft and uh, I had been interested in space and that clamped it. I knew that I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to work for them because there was a chance to do something that had never been done before. And, and, and that, that was I, I, exhilarating. I couldn't even, I couldn't think about working, doing anything else. Uh, fortunately, we came to terms real fast after I graduated and I went uh, directly to the Mercury program there on the, uh, uh, it wasn't the guidance system, it was the automatic stabilization and control system mm -hmm. on Mercury. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I went, uh, went to work for McDonald on, uh, in June of uh, 1959, right after Wait, I Who did you work, work for in McDonald? Uh, actually, we were trying to get organized on there and uh, and it kind of turned out I didn't have a boss. They, uh, there were there were five of us assigned to the ASCS. They didn't know what to do with us, so they put us over with the the airplane autopilot people. Hmm. And the airplane autopilot people didn't care much about Mercury, nor know much about Mercury, and so they let us do our own thing. So we were assembling the hardware and uh, uh, the pieces and putting them together and testing them and uh, we ended up building uh, a, a bit of our uh, test equipment, our own test equipment. And uh, the group then, well three out of four, uh, was transferred to Florida and, uh, and we were down here. Uh, again, we didn't have a boss. They set us in a room there and hang our ass and we were told to uh, to kind of report to the communications people because they had a lead engineer in there. Uh, 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 I don't even remember his name anymore. But uh, uh, we didn't bother him, he didn't bother us. We were in the room over by yourself. Come the, uh, uh, you know, a major test or a launch when we had to write a test report or a report of whatever we did there. Why? Uh, uh, nobody else wanted to, so I took that on myself, and, and I ended up uh, as the spokesman and kind of the leader of the group. And so they promoted me to that profession, <laughs> that, that position. Uh, it was really unofficial, but <laughs> that's how I got there. <laughs> anyway, as, as I came down 
uh, to the Cape here with the first Mercury uh, spacecraft there in, uh, who golly, that was uh, early, early summer of uh, 1960. Yeah, 60, because we launched uh, Shepard and Grissom in 61 and Glenn in 62 then, yeah. Anyhow, that's how I ended up here. Good. Now let's get with Don and bring him up to that point. Where were you born and raised, Don? <coughs> Attleboro, Mass. I actually spent most of my time in Rhode Island. West Warwick, Rhode Island was where I went to kindergarten and all the schools up to high school in West Warwick. And then from there, I got involved with the Navy, flying for the Navy. And then from there, I went to uh, Rhode Island State College for engineering. What did you fly in the Navy? Well, I was just training. Was, the SNJ is the biggest one that I got. But uh, then, let's see. <laughs> then I went to NASA. It was NACA then, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. And uh, they gave me a job to come down there to do research. And I thought that was a nice thing to do. I got, also got, got a job offer from uh, Pratt & Whitney. But uh, it, was, it was paid more, but I liked the idea of doing research. And uh, so I went with NASA, NACA, not NASA. <laughs> they, they changed the name NASA when they went to space stuff. The whole thing was different. And anyway, uh, so then I went down to Langley Field, and uh, well, first, first of all, I guess I might add in. I used to mess around with model airplanes, and do, in fact, I started building an airplane. <laughs> it never would have worked. <laughs> I found out now after it took away. Now you might you might laugh at that one. But it's very good. That physical image. The, the one fundamental thing that all physics is involved, all engineers is involved, you've got to start from there. If you ignore that, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, now, speaking of that, did you ever finish that sailboat that you were building down in Cocoa Beach? Oh, yeah. Did you finish it? The, the, the boat's finished, but it's not in the water yet. You never had it in the water. Never had it in the water. <laughs> I got tied up. <laughs> I remember you constantly rebuilt every part of that boat over the years. Yeah, I've been working on the airplane too. <laughs> I still got a, a beach craft, 35 beach. Same one you used to fly there at St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's yeah. fly back and forth from Houston to here. Yeah. And, uh, Gosh, you flew all over the country then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I had to go up to uh, Eagle Pitcher for some reason or other, you know. <clears throat> It used to be a terrible job trying to get there by the airline. Yes, commercial. I might do it in two hours. <laughs> commercial airlines at, uh, to, right. uh, to Joplin oh, yeah. were yeah. not the best so, in the world. So I did an awful lot of flying, you know, traveling. <laughs> Most of the time I do it because it was cheaper and faster yeah. than airlines. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> so I ended up, uh, well, I, I just enjoyed greatly all systems. And I got involved in designing and stuff. How you design stuff, you know. But it went back to the fundamental thing I just mentioned to you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I won't repeat again, but <laughs> if it wasn't for FM and F Eagle MA, there would not have been a sexual revolution, even if we know that <laughs> Of course, as far as I as I'm concerned, that always meant E equals I R. Uh, well, yes, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's, that's the same, same thing. thing. That's same the same thing. thing. You're just changing the terms, yep. but the, 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 the entity is the same. The same right. is changing the energy for source. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> yes, yep. But anyway, yes, <coughs> so I ended up, you know, kept me to get more tasks to do and so forth. Yeah. So I had a lot of very interesting situations, you know, like, which I could relate to. <laughs> Yeah, season. I was always tied up in, with something, some problem, some place that I was getting involved with. I met you in St. Louis uh, on the Mercury program, but I cannot for the life of me remember why. It, it had it had to be some problem. It had to do with the. Uh, uh, let's see. 
what was that body that, that uh, we docked with for Gemini? Gina? The Gina? The, G the Gina, yeah. Uh, was it the interface? Yeah, it was the interface the that had something to do with rates. I, me I remember it's just offhand. Yeah. It had something to do with rates, acceleration. For that's something. right, that's right. And, yeah. I. Uh, and I looked to you to do something. I forgot what exactly what. <laughs> I. I, I don't remember now what the, yeah, that the, uh, huh? Oh, yeah, I got, uh, I got involved in an awful lot of in, very interesting things, you know. But anytime there was a problem, I was always in the middle of it. Somehow. That's, I used to envy Don because of that. He, uh, where, where the action was, that was, he was always there. Now, but, when, when did they create Building 45? Was that in Apollo? Building what? Building 45. The building 45? Well, it started the Apollo to start with, you know. They, they started the new division, and I was the head of the division, yeah. and so I had the responsibility of setting, setting something up, doing So I, had, I came out with the mission report and evaluation of what the people were saying, oh, that's an anomaly, that's an anomaly. What the hell? We're, we're going to list what, that, what is and what isn't, and what not. <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to do when it's going to be done. <laughs> so I, I, I signed the thing, sent it out, and that become holy. It did. It yeah, did because yeah. well, two things. Uh, we were trying to learn, and everything we did was it's the first time we did it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And and some of it, uh, they almost said it couldn't be done, and and yet it wasn't. Looking back on it, it you know, it, it turns out to be pretty simple. But uh, if you don't know what you're doing, learning <laughs> learning to walk is kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had. I remember we had two things at the Kennedy. We had Building 45, that we had a, actually a Building 45 request, and we could ask them for help. Or on the other hand, if something happened in flight and they wanted to know what happened to Kennedy, they could send us a request and we had a communication going to try and help each other out. And with Marshall, the Los Angeles guys had the same thing with Hosk. Okay. So yeah. it was Hosk and Marshall, Building 45 at Houston, it was a back door. Okay. You have to go up to the program office and back down again. Yeah, and, and that's, that got to be just well. That's what I like about this guy. Tank. He could he could cut across that. I could pick up the phone, call him. Yeah, I know what. Was yeah, on. you could get it. <laughs> but you guys, you guys are talking about uh, later. Yeah. You know, we when when uh, we first moved into Hangar S, uh, the uh, well, they were still trying to trying to build a white room there because uh, uh, you know we were we were designing in St. Louis and sh and shipping trying to meet a, a predetermined date fictitious but anyway trying to meet it but as we designed we kept changing the vehicles of course to incorporate the the new any any new ideas we had or new developments and by that time we had already shipped some to the cape so we met our deadline so we ended up incorporating the changes in hangar rats. And so we had to build a white room to do that. We were going to, t we, we intended to test them there anyway, but uh, we had a big, a big uh, positive air pressure white room down there. Uh, and right above, well, because the astronauts quarters, their, their pre-launch quarters was right above it. And you guys had that then, chamber down there in hangar S too. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and uh, right outside of hangar S was the, uh, was the chimps. And the, and the trainers and the, and the two uh, two trailers out there, fenced in area, but uh, you know it's still there and SpaceX is using it. That is so neat. Well, I didn't know they were still using it. They uh, it it, it kind of looks weather worn, but uh, SpaceX leased it. It was it was scheduled for demolition uh, last year, year before, and uh, they didn't have the funds for that. And fortunately, uh, SpaceX uh, needed the space, and so they did it. Right. And they they said they were going to to refurbish it a bit. It, it looks weather worn. Hell, that's a Banana River Naval Air Station uh, hangar. You know, World War II yeah. vintage. But Don, looking back on Mercury, what were some of the things you really remember as problems that had to be solved? Well, I'll tell you some some simple one point blank. You know. Because I was always around with them, a manufacturing, watching what was going on and so forth and so on. I remember one thing that we, we had inspectors, you know, aircraft inspectors, you know, I don't know if you remember Charlie. 
probably somewhere or another. One of the, he, was, he was from the Cape. He was an aircraft inspector. Mm -hmm. um, ring a bell. But anyway, but they, they were around inspecting everything, you know, rivets oh, and all, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yes. But I was there all the time watching what the hell was being made, you know, why yeah. it was being made and so yeah. forth. And there was a bracket, you know, the whole, uh, some instrument or something. That he says, oh no, he 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 wrote, he wrote a uh, a complaint about it. You know what do they call it? Uh, oh, okay, yeah, there was a an, 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 uh, anomaly report. Anomaly, anomaly report. report. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, so a re report on it. You know. Yeah. So, so I saw that. And he said the thing's too flimsy. And I went to him. And I said, you think this is too flimsy? I said, what do you think it ought to be? And show me your calculations that determines that. <laughs> Of course, that did it, and that took care of that. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the hell the calculations are. Don't don't complain about what the hell you're talking about. Oh. But there was another one about a great job that they had on Mercury. The attitude. Remember the attitude indicator. Yeah. And the ball. Yeah. And yeah. So forth. Uh, one time, one time, you know, it didn't work when they turned the power on. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yes, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's my system. I remember that. Oh, is that yes. right? Oh, okay. yes. No yes, yes, yes. System. Oh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, so the vice president and the president of the company were all down there they were because they were ready to buy the thing off. Yes, they that were. That was one complaint against it. Uh, I said, hell no. I said, well, okay. I said, I'll make a deal with you. We take the thing out and turn it and twist it and, and try it again. And it did, it stopped, see, they had to take it out, you know, and all the problems and stuff. <laughs> it <laughs> it took forever to change those. Well, yeah, but oh, I mean, what well, I'm talking about is the, the things that people ignore. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make, you know. Okay. Just you, because something happened once, anybody says something, oh, it only happened once. Well, God damn it, you and your idiots, you already get the hell out of here if that's what it is. <laughs> do, you, do you remember? that you were instrumental in getting the, uh, we had certain rules we went by there, and one of the rules that he was instrumental in getting in every test document we had, we never launched with an unexplained anomaly. But we did. If there was a glitch, I know, but <laughs> if, if there was a glitch, there, it, we didn't go home until that glitch was explained, that type of thing. Well, I don't know what and, they had to do though, can you forget just a little bit. Yeah. We would have things happen we could not repeat for the life of us. That's right, yes. Now, when we did that, we pretty well would say there's one, two, or three different components that are a part of this chain. Mm -hmm. Change them all. Yes, yeah, I never remember that. Shotgun. Effect. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, then, you still weren't safe. You know, you still had that one time. We spent more time explaining the one time anomaly. And if you couldn't explain what would happen in flight and it was not catastrophic, you couldn't go with that. Yeah. But we explained many times a one-time anomaly. Here's what will happen if this happens in flight. It is not deleterious to the point that we can't come back and we can fly. Yeah, as long as it, but we spent yeah. hours and hours yeah, that, that one time that, stuff, one you know, time that, no. that, that's something somebody doesn't understand about basic physics, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, 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 it happened once, it's going to happen again. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, but you remember. Time that, interval has nothing to do with it. Yeah, but you remember back then, it, it, we, it was all analog, we didn't have anything digital, and we didn't get near as much information. True. Uh, from the, while we were testing, so it was a lot harder to explain something. Well, the testing's yeah, not yeah. right either. No. The gravity's different, everything's different, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, that, that, that running the test is a waste of time. Well, and and, uh, and, and some of the after-the-flight uh, analysis, uh, you remember uh, on Glenn's flight, and, uh, and his, uh, he, he said his, his uh, autopilot wasn't, wasn't working. He, he tried. Remember, they they when we were designing, they were going to fly backwards. Yeah. Okay. Then they said no. They wanted to fly forward. They wanted to see as the, as the, where they were going, and so we had to make them turn around. But we were configured to precess there at four degrees a minute. 
you know, they were, they were flying backwards. As we went around, 90 minutes, we go to 360 degrees. Keep this attitude ball Two where it's modes. supposed to be. Small in forward, blunt in forward. Okay. SEF and BEF. That's okay. right. Well, that, but that switch wasn't there on the first one. And they, the astronauts finally said, okay, yeah, we want to fly forward. So we put that friggin' switch in. Well, guess what? When Glenn, on Glenn's flight, he hit it, uh, small end forward, she turns around just like it's supposed to, everything's fine. Now when he's going to orient this thing for retrofire, there, he forgot to, to disable that switch. So his answer to that, and uh, I don't remember who came up with that answer, was to just turn it off. You know, turn turn the whole uh, whole uh, ASCS off, which they did, and he had to add it, you know hold it manually, coming in. But uh, uh, w later, and I had somewhere in 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 my crap at home, I have I have a recording of him. Well, remember Bob Shep? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Bob Shep and I questioned him about all the great details there, and and uh, and he finally said that yeah, he 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 remembered. That he had forgotten to throw that switch, and 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 that anomaly was was his his fault. But the, th the thing that bothers you about something like that that should have been in the checklist on the ground with him. That's right. They should have told him what to do. Well, they got they got all excited there about the about the possible the heat, uh, shield. heat shield dropping down, and and that took precedent over everything. And and uh, I guess that's why they did not go through the yeah, somebody not, missed it. through the sequence there with him. Yeah, but that uh, uh, he uh, he you know he it was a good explanation. Well, it was good to have the the correct explanation really? because we couldn't figure out what the hell happened. Yeah, but now, and, when they came back with that one, did you get involved in looking at why the uh, well, yeah. Well, well, first of all, yeah, let me tell you this: when when that happened. You know, let's see, Kraft was a test conductor then, or uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh -huh. Control, or whatever. He, he was. Uh, uh, he's the guy we reported. He's the guy we reported to. Yeah, flight control. Flight yeah, control. He was, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I was a systems guy. Yeah. Okay, so as soon as that happened, I said, "No problem, just continue." The reason I knew what the hell was going on is because the limit switches. I saw what they put in. Nothing wrong with what they put in. Then they adjusted them and so forth and so on. If you understand, oh yeah, that's one heat condition. That's a new heat condition over there. So the setting wasn't right. So the limit switch said that the oh, heat should was dropped down. That had nothing to do. But you had to understand that in order to make that comment. The tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that, that that was the dumb, the dumbest thing. One of the dumbest things they did. Fortunately, it was not bad. Yeah. What they did, yeah. that could have been very catastrophic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not kidding. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> oh, but, oh, yeah, that, that, that was a very simple adjustment. And that, uh, but you had to know that. You had, you, you, if you didn't know that, nobody could make a comment. Then what the hell they're talking about? You yeah. haven't seen it. Well, they, uh, it, it worked out, you know, what the, uh, holding the, holding the uh, retro rockets on there, but nobody really knew what was going to happen. Yeah. There, that those things were Lord. That steel was that thick on them. I didn't know where it melted. Yeah, but the idea that the thing was wrong is making a decision not to not to do anything, to not realize what the situation was. Yes, yeah. that that was the yeah. that was the basic fundamental thing in there. Yeah. But we only had uh, I don't know. He made three orbits, so we had. Uh, well, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, there, there was no problem with him. Well, you had to make a quick decision on the ground with... with well, it, well, yeah, but it was time, it was the decision's five minutes or five hours to make a damn bit of difference, it doesn't change anything. Uh, it, it does <laughs> if he's waiting for an answer up there. Well, well, what the hell, but he shouldn't be waiting for an answer. <laughs> I know, but... but, but I he, mean, the whole process was wrong. But he, it was, there you go, there you go. <laughs> but But you had to convince a bunch of people before that would, that command. I didn't have to issue. convince anybody. But was the, the, the hubcaps that were up there was sitting there to, making decisions. The vice presidents and presidents of the company. <laughs> the other ones that was up there behind there making decisions. I'll tell you that first of all. The, the hubcaps? Yeah, the oh, hubcaps. Okay, all right. I okay. call them hubcaps. <laughs> I love it. Okay, but it, uh, 
Yeah, he, we they didn't know what they were well, doing. Had, point we, blank. had we lost uh, Glenn, though, that would set the program back. Good yeah, but it wasn't. That, but it wasn't it, what you're the, making an assumption is not even legitimate. That's exactly right. Yes, I, I, yeah. I can hit a satellite just as well, or a meteorite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Now. Now, going going into the Gemini program now. What on Gemini were some of the real issues that you got involved in? to try and solve on orbit. One, well, this, well, see, one thing I think I, from uh, Gemini was the fact that the instrument panel, they were bringing the instruments from the Agena into the spacecraft. You remember that? Oh, yeah. That's what, what the design was. And I said, no, you don't need to do that. Put the instruments right on the Agena and just look out the window and see what the hell they read. We don't have to worry about bringing them in there. Or That's right. You're, I read a book, in fact, not too long ago. You're quoted on that. Is that, that right? That was a great decision. Yes, it was. Yes. Well, it was a simple decision. Well, well yeah, 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 but it, 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 now it's simple. In, in, That's like picking up something off the floor. Look at, yeah, but looking back, it is. But at the time, Jesus. at the time, the impact could have been could have been phenomenal. Oh yeah, but that, you never look at what could. You ne never address what could, what is. Uh, you talking about after the fact? Yeah, I can, yeah anything, anything you talk about something, you just say, well, if I didn't do so, such, something could happen. I could sit and oh, dream yeah, about yeah, that yeah, all yeah, day there, long. There's no, no end to that. But uh, You're at fault if you do that. Right well, in the well, first time. We used time. to do that. We used to do that during design. It's called failure modes, effects, and analysis. That's right. Which was what if. Yeah. But we yeah, played but that you game. But you know what? I'm what if. Be, I can what if. Now there's no end to that. No, no. I'm just saying we played no. that game during the design. During the design phase, not not the flight phase. In the, Anytime. No, in the flight phase, you got to do. You got to know what's there. But you're dependent on what the hell's there. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And yeah. The, in the design stage, you draw the line. You're saying yes. that's there, but you you put it there. You know, I I was I was talking to. Somebody, I don't know who it was now, uh, within the last few years, and uh, and I said uh, uh, every machine ever built will fail sooner or later, and so the if you're in the space, if it's a space machine, what you do is design it so that that failure is after you're finished with. Yeah, but you, you don't, don't need know, it anymore. But you don't know that. I, that's you don't key, know right that. There, right? know, somebody well, said I'm good for 100 flights. Where well, the hell did you get that? Okay, I mean, <laughs> we were talking. We were talking about this. This uh, uh, what were the five zeros, six zeros? I forgot now. What what kind of uh, help me, Charlie? I've forgotten what that. Uh, uh, that'll come to me. He went for three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Come to me. So many zeros of yeah. in, in your failure mode uh, yeah. analysis, and and you're right. But what they always said was. All right, take the, uh, take the, at that time it was the F-4, it was in the design stage, and they, they said, uh, how many carrier landings can you make with it? And so they put her up 20 feet high, and they drop it. They 20 feet high, and they drop it. And they keep doing that until the landing gear went right through the wings. Well, that's a hell of a note. That, uh, yeah. what, what a stupid way of doing something. I know, you can I know. sit and analyze no. the thing on a piece of paper, you know. Yeah, I, I know, mean, I know. <laughs> but, but you have to prove it. You, well, okay. Says who? Uh, says Where the hell? Well, the customer. But, but, but the customer, that you're supposed to help the customer, not hinder him. No, we were we were trying to help him. We, uh, but, but the... Uh, I don't remember now, but let's say you dropped it uh, 10,000 times before the, it went through the wings. Then you say, okay, this thing is 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 safe for at least five thousand. So you you say, okay, the lifespan of the thing is five thousand carrier landings. You know that's that's the way they did it back then. I but a very stupid that. way of doing it. Well, isn't yeah, it? but that's uh, you know you didn't have computers. We to don't do that it. now. What do you, you don't need computers to analyze it. <laughs> well, yeah, but not. Yeah. It, it, well, we we designed this this Mercury with with uh, slide rules there, and, and most of Jimmy was slide rules. It and what's wrong with the slide rules? Very good. You can see good. more than what you can from the computer. The computer, you see one number. Slide rules, you see all the numbers. You see what the effects are right there. I mean, you can't uh, get that from a computer. I'll well, tell you that true. right now. That's true. I agree. Okay, I agree. let's go to Apollo. All right. Let's move into. Uh, <laughs> The first command service modules, and up 
and including Apollo 1. We participated from Kennedy, just in the design reason, as a matter of fact, with you again, participated in the designs, and then um, just like we did for Mercury and Gemini, Kennedy provided an acceptance team for JSC out of Downey. Because we acted as your acceptance team. And from the standpoint of learning, you know, we knew probably more about the operating system per spacecraft than anybody. Us and the Rockwell guys that we had hired to come down and do the checkout for us. But the unmanned vehicles off 34, everything was just brand new and big. Here we came off with one little old Titan and a little old Gemini and Mercury. And here we had this damn Saturn V and we had a lunar module to worry with, a command module. And all of a sudden an order of magnitude opened up on the complexity of what we were dealing with at KSC. That's when we really needed you guys' help. Because there was almost, almost every day early, we were in touch with the guys in Houston about some problem, or they were in touch with us about some design change. So we formed a pretty good damn team. As you remember, we were Florida operations for both JSC and for Marshall. But after Apollo 1, we became those bastards at the Cape because we were now a center all our own. But there was a subtle change between the relationship between the system guys that were the design guys and the system guys that were checkout. Yeah, but they shouldn't have made the two separate. I agree. That should be one and the same. I mean, that's, a, 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 that's what they did. I know that. As a result, you had all kinds of problems. Yep. Waste the money, waste the time, and that's yeah. because it's communication. That's it, you know. Well, we we solved that on the on the Mercury by uh, uh, you know the design guys were the ones who went down and checked it. Three hundred of us engineers got that, that with, were working on the design up there moved down, and we, we were the launch crew down here. Yeah. Yeah. That that was one of the biggest mistakes that NASA made made it to make a launch facility and a design facility. Yeah. Shouldn't be. Yeah, we, uh, now yeah, we then evolved though into what you're saying. Yeah. Later on, the, the uh, uh, oh, like in, particularly in Skylab, but, uh, but like the latter part of Jimmy, it, it became those bastards at the Cape and those bastards from mm -hmm. St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah, but, a, it, but it, it's just human nature that yeah. gets into stuff like that. You yeah. want to eliminate that. Yeah, I know. But you got one piece of paper, okay? Yeah. One pencil drawn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not 500 pencils drawn on the same paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was hurting us too was that the paperwork chain you're talking about would start at the factory, go to Houston, because that's where your control was, then come back down to KSC. Yeah. Yeah. That was a bad, a bad uh, situation. Then they should never yeah. split, the, split the operation up. You need an operation there and there, but not the way it was made. It, was, yeah. it just broke pieces apart. I mean, it made ordeals. I mean, you always had to have a meeting or something. There's no reason for it. The line and keep on going. <laughs> well, you might remember when, uh, for both Apollo and for both uh, Command Service Module and Lunar Module, we had Aaron Cohen and we had Rip Boner. And those guys very quickly set up phone calls to our project engineering office at Kennedy at like six o'clock in the morning. It was five o'clock their time. Yeah, yeah. Every morning, <laughs> Rip Bolander would call me yeah. and bypass his program office and our program office and my management and come straight to the workers. It was that worked great. Yeah. We actually used the plant paper things, and then we'd have a follow-up weeks later with the level two program saying, implement in your project. 
And it would have all that shit with it we'd already done. Well, that level one, <laughs> level two, they shouldn't have had either, level three. There shouldn't be different levels. Uh, that's another unnecessary thing that caused a lot of problems, mm -hmm. a lot of delays, a lot of yeah. costs and whatnot. Were you in the, uh, what do they call it, the Mur, Mur office? The Mur. Yeah. Mission uh, Evaluation Room. Yeah, weren't you in charge of that? In, in oh, yeah, that was mine. I, I created the thing. Okay, that's hard to say. How, what how, What did you go through to create that? I no, no, I just, you invited I just, me down there. I just got there. each one of the contractors. They sent me the best design guy they got in each one of the systems. Okay. I got the designers. I mean, that's what the guys that I had in, in uh, Burr. Yeah. They came from wherever, wherever companies they came from. Not only Rockwell, I mean, but the, the, the subcontractors and all. Mm -hmm. Whatever needed, I, I had them. I know you. I, you invited me down there twice, actually, and in in, I sat in that room with you. Yeah, I, I, that was an amazing conglomeration of knowledge. Holy yeah. cow! Oh, it was all right there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, didn't have to go anyplace. <laughs> you had Joe Mitchell in there too, didn't you? Oh yeah, he initially worked for me. Yep, I thought he did. Yeah. Had a lot of dealings with him over the years. But go to Apollo One. What was your group's involvement in Apollo One? There wasn't no group then. There wasn't, you didn't have Murphy. No, it didn't have such a yeah. thing. It didn't exist. That's what happened after that. After that, sometime after that. This is when they started the Mess with flying, didn't know who the hell was going to do what and everything. They started uh, it, you know, one one control point where they'd have uh, who the hell was the guy I'm trying to think of, the fat guy. Thinking of Scotty Simpkinson. Scotty Simpkinson, yeah. Oh, good lord. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, that, I mean uh, uh, he's a nice just, guy and everything else, you know, but boy, I mean, <laughs> you know, good uh, damn, this is an <coughs> operation, but. But management put him where he was. <laughs> <laughs> this is being recorded. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say Do you remember <laughs> early shuttle? Scotty came down here on an inspection. He got stuck in the aft end of the orbiter. He was so big. Yeah. He got up there. <laughs> that right? It took about four technicians to get him out of there. You know, amazing him back out. You know why he got transferred from the Cape to, to Houston? No. Because <laughs> you already said he's, you're going to transfer him or he's going to kill that son of a bitch one of these days. Oh, man. Mm, I didn't want to say that. Uh, I, I never Scotty quite was, understood why Scotty was in the position he was in. I, 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 I know exactly. No, from the history of what he had done in the past or something like that. Well, he, when, when organizations start to get put together, you know, they had a, whoever was in what position someplace yeah. else at some other facility, you know, other right. center or whatever you want to talk about, they, they pulled them in. Yeah, and if you couldn't cut the mustard in one job, you were promoted out of there so that most you of wouldn't be these people down here. I'll tell you the truth, yeah. most of them, yeah, they shouldn't have had the degree in anything. You're not kidding. <laughs> No, I, I there's some real real stories. But that that's, <laughs> that's, that that has nothing to do with engineering. That has to do with the management. Yeah, that's right. Management structure is terrible. Yeah. I mean, you, you, when you talk about management structure, you look, look at where it is in NASA headquarters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Ralph Langstrom. Remember him? Who? Doctor Ralph Langstrom. Langstrom. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, see, I can't picture him right now. Yeah, but I remember the name. He was, he came early in Apollo, and after the fire, I don't remember him being around much anymore. I don't know. Well, the fire, that's an interesting thing. It should never happen. That's an engineering problem right there. People doing what in the hell they, I mean, somebody ought to, you know, understand what the oxygen atom is like. <laughs> Obviously, nobody, nobody did. I mean, that's all you have to know. You, yeah. you need one course in that, and that, that's all you need to know. Yeah. And, and, and look at the big well, hurrah that happened because of that. They went belly out the wrong way then. Yeah. And doors and, you know, they just kind of get rid of all the stuff and then get rid of the oxygen. You're going to need a problem. Well, but <laughs> but we did it in, in Mercury and Jiminy, but you it causes a lot of extra design work. Unnecessary. You, well, it's unnecessary. It, it, but it created I'm sorry, problems. It's necessary if you have 100% oxygen. It's not necessary if you don't. Well, even whether you don't have the oxygen or not, it should be designed such that you don't have to have any problems. 
Well, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one to go. Yeah. No, I mean, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It is. The, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, if you're trying Look, you're, to do... You're, you're familiar with the periodic table, are you? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Each one is in the position, okay? Yes. The oxygen, the hydrogen, the nitrogen, I you name it. You. They're all in there and they all respond to their own thing. I don't care which one you take, they all do the same damn thing. All of a sudden, you don't have a strain of oxygen on them. Okay. There's no okay. such thing. Okay. okay. They're all, right. all the same thing. The same color, the same height, and everything else under the sun. Their response is the same. And you need okay. to understand what each one does. That each one does something different. They work together differently. And anything well, you do in engineering goes that way. Talk about wires. You're talking about electrons or whatever. There's all the same periodic table they use, and they follow the rules always. Nobody has found in the universe anything different than that yet. Uh, that's true. That's true. That's true. I never associated it with basic design, but I... Uh, well, it is. Uh, that's the basic design yeah. stuff. So that's where you start with, the atom. <laughs> well, what I'm talking about... And you build up what the hell you want to make from that. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think of that, Charlie? I don't... He's, he's, he's turned philosopher now in these well, old days. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're I'm right. Not right. No, you, yeah, hit, you're right. you hit the problem on the head. We had been so good coming out of aircraft to Mercury to Gemini with no problems. Yeah. Nobody even thought about that. It was just You're right. That's fact. a good point you make. That's yeah, 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 that's it. They didn't think about they it. Didn't, they, 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 they didn't even address it. No, that's, look, uh, look how that's, successful we've been on these programs. It will yeah. stay the same way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's what yeah. they did. Yeah, that's, you're right. That, that was, and, and the, the initial programs had, we had problems on Mercury and Gemini, but the, the problems in orbit there never caused any kind of, of disaster, any kind of mission failure. Uh, you know, we, we spun Armstrong around a little bit yeah. there, uh, when, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it, it could have been, it, it was that close to being a real catastrophe. Oh yeah, they could have been, oh yeah. You're damn I mean, right. You talk, you're talking about the, the luck of the Irish. Right? Yes, <laughs> you're not kidding. Yeah, but you, you got to look at the situation too. Mercury and Gemini, you didn't move around. You sat in that damn seat. Yeah, that, yeah you that's couldn't, right. You couldn't move you your hands or feet either. You slept or you shit on that well, same yeah, damn the problem, seat. The that, problem yeah. is different, yeah. And on a pillow, you problem. can move it's around. Different. You oh, can yeah. 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 interact with anything in that base oh, yeah. track. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that, that made a world of difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that was almost like, you know, we could, we, we could crawl in Mercury and... Uh, uh, would not even crawl in Mercury. We could. We could, we could uh, move a little bit in Gemini, and then that was not a a total. What we were, okay, Mercury. Mercury. We proved that that a man could function in space. He could live up there, and and we could bring him back there. And then then Gemini. We proved the rendezvous docking, uh, EVA activities, whatever, all, everything necessary to go to the moon. Hadn't been successful, Gemini, we would not have gone to the moon. All right. Now then, the in both cases, the astronauts were almost along for the ride, as long as we proved we wouldn't kill them by being in a weightless condition. And so Apollo was the first time that they could actually move around yep. there and, and, and get into trouble. Uh, you turn them loose and they would and, and and give them that option uh, of uh, yeah you can do something that's that's that you're going to pay for yeah uh, they uh, but they were where they were strapped in Mercury and Gemini they used to, they 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 it, it they could hit the wrong uh, button or the wrong switch of course but uh, but it was it it was hard for them to to uh, be the cause of their own malfunction, yep. you know. But well, hell, I mean, you, you, I only told him, uh, I told Gordo one time that I never said it again. But you know, Mercury was designed to bring back a dead astronaut. You know, he, if he if he had folded his arms at liftoff, he'd come back fine, sure. no problems at all. Jimmy could have been the same way. Yeah, but he, he had pills to kill himself if, if he needed to. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's well, yeah. Away, which is okay. Well, that, that, that's, that's better. That. Hey, that's better than burning up. 
Well, what if one or the other you die? You're going to die, but, but would, <laughs> Your you, choice. <laughs> would you rather die of, of flaming death or, or an instant cyanide death? I don't know. After it was all over, I guess I wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> death is dead. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's jump back. Just, let's go uh, on the lunar surface. Uh, Murr Building 45 was very active during that time. What, what were some of the bigger problems <coughs> you guys looked at on the lunar surface? On the moon surface? Once you're on the moon surface? Well, first of all, the gravity was way less, which changed the whole atmosphere of what you're dealing with, okay? If I go from 1.6 G to from a G, that's a big damn difference in the way everything works. I mean, I, I'm going to just mention this once, F is equal to MA again. Yeah. No. <laughs> the, even on the lunar surface. Even on the lunar surface. And I didn't even know the values are different, there. but that's still there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't think the distance or the, or the speed made any difference? No. No, I'm just trying to point you late there. No, no. Yeah. No, but he sort of asking what kind of problems did you have or have to look at there once they were down? Oh, once they were down. Yeah. Okay, it's a difference between you know, the problems you had getting there. Oh boy. I'm talking about the sunlight and, and the surface and yeah. where you're going to land. I mean, what, what the, where you're going to get in the, the position where you bear the spot where you're going to crash or something. Yeah. Let me let me ask you. Did did you actually think Armstrong would make it? Oh yeah. Did you? Oh yeah. They, I had no. I mean, I'd be surprised if he didn't. Let me put it that Why? way. Have well, why? Okay, all the physics says that it's going to work. <laughs> yes, the physics says that, but he had how many seconds of fuel left when he touched down? Well, that's all right. It's better than zero. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if we're so close to zero. But the, how I close you, what difference does it make how close you are to zero? Oh, it depends on how tight cheeks you want to hold. Oh, that's an know. emotional thing. <laughs> that has nothing to do with physics. <laughs> Come on. Well, okay. Let me... how, how close am I to being hurt? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my boy, I really came close then. Next time, make sure we're further away. <laughs> All right. Let, let me ask. Let me ask this differently. Looking today at uh, uh, well, you know, shuttle and uh, I don't know what a ride looks like, but uh, but at today's oh, man, man, the vehicles there, uh, and and then go back. And, and, and look at look at Mercury and then Gemini and Apollo, but particularly Mercury and Gemini. There, you know, we all we had was switches and, and dials mm -hmm. and, and 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 analog and relays. There. There's nothing wrong with analog. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, far, okay, but would, would far you, better than digital, I'll tell you that. Okay. All right, looking at it now, would you get in that thing go out in space? Hell yeah. Well I would too, but 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 we're dumb. You know, with the average guy looking at that. Well, I, no, I see the it. This is not made for the average guy. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. No, they have uh, Mercury and Gemini uh, on display, of course, at the Boeing Museum, up there, the McDonald Museum up there, and at the Science Center. And uh, we get the kids uh, looking at them and looking at, and and they they cannot believe that you would actually go in space there in that vehicle. You know. Well, they, you know. Look, if, if I get, uh, I'm just on uh, my feet yeah. uh, and jump, yeah. let me just jump as far as I can jump. Watch where I go. You, you can plot what I do. Brrr, boom. Yeah. Or I can put more energy in there and go brrr, boom. Or I can go more and go and keep on going. And pretty soon, but the surface is not flat. It's bent. The earth is bent. It goes on and closes on itself. Okay, so the faster I go, it ends up I'm getting away from the Earth, you know, such that the Earth, I can never get it again. And I'm in orbit. But okay. nothing's changed from when I just threw it down. The values are changed and that's it, but the trajectory and all the physics is the same, identical. Not different. Oh, well, you're right, you're right. <laughs> it's the same damn thing, it's just the values I've changed. The speed, that's the only thing I've changed. I got the... Just well, the, the speed. The speed's the only thing. That is equal to MA again. The speed is the only thing keeping you up there. You reduce the speed, the gravity. The, the, gravity the force is zero there. That's right. It's not 
there's no force there because the girth is pulling and, and the a centrifugal force is pulling out, it's balanced and that's why I'm staying exactly there. Right. That's if I go one to the other, right. either I'm going to go further out or come back to the earth. One okay, now that's, that's why rendezvous is so difficult. That's the key no, thing. No, okay, let me that's say the one proved. thing in Gemini prove, okay? That's you right. can't aim at something going with it because it doesn't work. That's Physics right. says it won't work. Okay, yes. <laughs> and, and we tried it, we tried it with a man and we found out that a man cannot cannot handle he that can, spacecraft. No, he, can, he can do it. He has to be uh, taught not, how to do it. Well, he, He's going to aim for where he's going to meet something. Yeah, but that's not, that's not the, the, the human... Two, that's, the that's two trajectories got to cross, yeah. and that's when they can change. That's it. not the fight or pilot instinct. You know, they, well, uh, well, but, okay, uh, I'm not saying how the brain works. That's, yeah. that's, well, the Mercury, I mean, the, the, the Gemini computer enabled that to happen easily, but uh, uh, manually... Yeah, you, you, your chances were of, of, a, of a successful rendezvous were pretty slim. Let's say you ever shoot a gun? Oh, yes, many times. Now, if you aim exactly what you want to hit, you're not going to hit it ever. That's right. That's <laughs> the same thing in, all, in the Gemini. Yeah, but you, you have... Can, you can't aim for it right here on the earth and whatnot and hit it. You're okay. going gonna to allow for that <laughs> to make the correction, to make... The, yeah. In the face. The but, same thing in Gemini. It's no different. Yeah. The physics hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. I, you just further on out. That's all. <laughs> yeah, but but then making two vehicles uh, there come together and and have the a, two orbits have to interface, uh, yeah, just like I do right. here. You you can take a bullet and, and throw it, and I can take one and throw it. If we do it just right, we can have them sort of collide. Yes, yes. If we don't, if you just aim at it, you ain't going to hit it. Yeah. The same thing happens right here on the ground. Is it up there? Okay, uh, let's go to Skylab. Oh yeah. <laughs> if, you at, if you look at Skylab, and obviously the first problem with not having the panels all come out. Were you guys in Houston involved in looking at that fix, or was that just Marshall? Which, which one did you? On the um, panels that didn't come out on Skylab. Yeah, the, the solar panels that didn't come out on Skylab yeah. 1? Well, first of all, oh. well, first was that fairing. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the, the panels that came out. Yeah, the, but the yeah. we had the fairing problem. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, okay, okay, that. I yeah. know what you're yeah. talking about yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. So, now, were you guys involved in that? Or was that just Marshall? <clears throat> yes, we, we, were, we were looking at water. Was that the one that, would, because of rain, got into the drain holes and blew the panels off because of the steam? Uh, I don't remember. No, no, no. That was that was way before. That was an Atlas. That was an Atlas. Atlas I didn't remember deal. that. No. You remember that? I don't remember that one. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was purely a mechanical problem. That no, the was deploy cool. mechanism didn't work. Half the panel came off, and then it drove that. Uh, uh, that solar array halfway yeah. out looked like a broken, and then, in fact, it broke one of them off and then drug the other one out mm -hmm. about half. It sounded yeah. really, and my yeah. point being, I don't remember if it was just Marshall that did that design change or whether Houston had That's, uh, as far as I know, uh, no, we, we, didn't, we didn't get involved. No, we only talked to Marshall. No, no we and, didn't, it didn't uh, mess with anything. No. The only time, the only one time that, that, uh, uh Patron. Called up Kraft to yeah. want me to. Yeah. And Patron says, "I want Arabian up here to help us with the problem." Yeah. <laughs> that was that was, to me was something yeah. to go and get a, a guy from another center to go help somebody with the problem. <laughs> you, you you knew Rocco, didn't you? I knew Rocco. Okay, All right, enough said. I knew. <laughs> you know those people in <laughs> those people. <laughs> He used, to sit, he used to sit up there at his desk and have everybody in the room. Uh -huh. And he'd sit there and talk to you like this, scratching on both sides of his belly. <laughs> they huge, were, huge old belly. Uh, they were as scared of him as a snake. Man, they go. I tell you what, the asshole of the universe, Tom O'Malley. Tom. <laughs> would you the call him? The only guy in the world he was afraid of was Rocco. <laughs> everybody else was just. <laughs> <laughs> but Rocco got his attention for some reason. I tell you, Rocco straightened them out uh, there. They uh, they needed some straightening out and some. Well, yeah, he, he, was, he was a forceful individual. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he, 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 
he, he makes a good leader. You, you know, he, he makes a leader. I'm not that's sure right. It doesn't leader. make any, well, well, good, I should say. Good depends on what you're well, leading. Well, you, you, you can lead by, by uh, people being afraid of what could happen there, or you could lead by example. There, or you could you could lead. You could lead both. Yeah, and he didn't have. He yeah. he was in his his glory if if everybody was scared shitless of him. You know that's yeah. that, yeah. and that's the way he would rule. Yeah. And and he he'd come down the aisle, uh, and 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 he always had two or three people with him, and one guy had a pad out, and that's all he's for, just to write down things. Rocco would tell him as he went, and and <laughs> he was. It was really something, man. But uh, uh, yeah, but they got the job done. Uh, I'll yeah. say that for them. Yeah, they. Uh, uh, I, did you guys come up? Who who came up with the with the or did we come up with that one? Uh, the tent over there for the, the solar heating. Uh, on Skylab. Uh, on Skylab, yeah. It was Marshall. The mountain, yeah. Was it, it was Marshall? I don't, I don't remember whether they did it or we did it. it was, I'm pretty sure. Well. The ET. What are you talking about? What? The, the uh, uh, when when that one when the array tore off that, that side tore off. Yeah. There it uh, it screwed up the the. Uh, oh, the thermal is. the thermal yeah. system. Oh yeah, no, that yeah. was oh, yeah, <laughs> that was the first thing on that with that whole involved. We did that all in Langley. I mean, in uh, Houston. Okay, but made uh, the thing flew it down here and everything else, and I I headed up the whole activity in the shop. Okay, and, they would, and to figure out how to package it to get it up. Oh there, yeah, and then, we did the whole thing. The Marshall thing. had nothing to do with it. Okay, I didn't know who came up with that. Oh yeah, they was, uh, you're looking at them here. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I thought that looks like an Arabian fix because number it one, it's crude or hell, and number two, it worked. It was. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, remember the guy did was Jack Lawson. Is that right? Jack was the one that did the EVA. They sent it all oh, out. That's there. right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He got yeah, it yeah. out, and it was 180 degrees out. Off. Yes. yes and they had to put it, it back in and turn the damn thing around and send it back out again. Yeah, yeah. But it worked. Yeah. yeah. Had to go through the the. Uh, uh, in that hatch. Oh, the hatch twice yeah. on the thing. Yeah. But. Uh, oh yeah, that 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 was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and the head of the shop was the guy. You know, I, I worked with him directly. Okay. Uh, what I'll think of his name in a minute. But very good. That was a that was a good, yeah, good, good time, time a good was, fifteen cent fix for a million dollar problem. It, yeah, it, time, it was great, was, man. Congress gave us a a, a a bonus for that. Cite, did they? Oh yeah. I know you got a citation. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah. yeah, they gave us a bonus. For oh, that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh boy. Let's go to shuttle. Yeah. Did that in two weeks. Mm -hmm. That was quick. Yeah. Two weeks. We you had it. If you go to shuttle. And you pick out the first design reviews, and of course we didn't have any test flight with nobody on board. Our first flight was with um, Crippen and Young. That just blew my mind that there was no test flight. We're going to just fly this damn thing regardless. Yeah. And give them a couple of yeah. ejection seats that might work. Yeah. That's a, there's certain times you've got to take a risk. But now what, That's it. if you look back now, when we accepted shuttle, uh, Kennedy didn't want to accept it. We were out there, we had all these problems that we were showing to Yardley, because he was program manager. <coughs> He'd already made up his mind, it's time for shuttle to come to Kennedy. We've got to get a tail out of factory. So here we go, we bring it down here. We didn't have it here any time at all, and we DD 250 it back to Houston. Houston said, any client connect, and Jack Armstrong, the all American boy, one of the astronauts, God, what was his name? But they sent a whole team down here with Downey to redo the tile and fix all the systems that weren't ready. So Houston had it back for over a year. <coughs> and we accepted it for the second time. Only vehicle we ever accepted twice at Kennedy. How were you guys involved in that mess 
during that year of finishing shuttle so we could actually service it and launch it. I just don't remember. We were so busy trying to get our procedures ready and our software ready and our ground support equipment ready and we just kept low. We kept under the, <laughs> under the horizon and never said anything. But did they physically ship it down here yeah. and then to physically the, no, to Johnson? they physically shipped it here and we kept it here. <laughs> we gave JSC OPF-1. Oh, okay, okay. And they came in in Splinter City well, out there, Yeah. brought all the Rockwell guys, hired a bunch of arms pickers here to come in and do tile. Yeah. And we had over a year to get ready. Okay. But what did you guys do during that time? Well, whatever the problems we were involved with, we were involved with, it <coughs> didn't change anything. <laughs> but now, were you guys involved in the actual design during that year? We, we were involved with the design forever. So even when it was down here, as far as you guys are concerned... As, as I recall, I never recall now yet, now that you mentioned it, there was uh, some stuff going on, you know. A lot. Yeah, I remember one thing. Yeah, why the hell they ship it? They don't even ship it any place, you know. <laughs> Where it is doesn't make a difference, you know. <laughs> you got a problem, you got a problem. It's not... I see it made a big difference to us until we, yeah, gave, it back, that, until we sure. gave it back to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know that, yeah. but a but lot of that had to do with schedule. So it sure did. did. In Washington, sure that did. had to do with money, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, congressmen had to, if something's not going right, they'll say, oh, yeah, we're not going to give you the funds. You're not, you haven't done what you said you were going to do. And, and then one of the keys. All that stuff, yeah, so that juggling going around, you yeah. know, now that you mentioned it, you know, yeah, yeah. I didn't pay attention to that. Well, the key is, have you shipped? And it's the same identical yeah, thing yeah. we did with yeah. Mercury and Jimmy. It's just on the we chart. It, Who the hell looks at the chart? Yeah, we finished it up at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> the chart doesn't do anything. If you go back to the first delivery of the first Mercury, Walt Caprin said he and about three or four more other guys from JSC actually stood in front of the Mercury and would not let McDonald bring it out the door. Yeah. In St. Louis. In St. Louis. Uh, you remember that? That's yes, I do. Yeah, the uh, that was kind of right. He they had to sign off before we could we could deliver it, and they wouldn't sign off because we had several design changes that had not been incorporated. Yeah. There. Uh, so our solution to that. And I say, "Our." I wasn't involved in that decision, but our, the McDonald's solution was that okay, we'll set up a white room and a group at, in Hangar S, and and they are McDonald people. They're trained in St. Louis, the same people, and, and we will even do better. It'll be the same people down there that would have done it here. So we just transfer everything there. But me, of course, politically, we get we get the uh, uh, one, the first Mercury has been delivered now, and now the check comes in the house, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, that's and Walt says, Walt was was kind of like Arabian. He was a common sense guy, and he says, why and basically why in the heck would you would you not take those guys instead of sending them down the Cape, just let them finish it here. And then go down there, and, and instead of sending it down there and, and having to get up to speed and, and, and all that sort of crap. And of course, your honest answer was the, uh, the, uh, they're, they're up to speed. They're, they're ready to go. We'll have it all set up for them. It'll be just like working here in St. Louis, except we'll be working there. Well, hell, I, I, Walt knew better than that because at that time uh, we were still trying to, uh, we, were, we were carting. Uh, uh, Vanguard, I think it was, had that hangar before, and we were trying to get rid of all that crap out of there. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, I don't remember the physically standing there, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised at all because uh, he didn't raise his voice, but he had a lot of common sense. Cappy, Walt was another one. Uh, Cappy that, didn't know how to raise his voice. No, he didn't, uh, and he got things done, though. They. Uh, uh, when we had a, um, let me think, I don't know what Jiminy vehicle it was, 
anyway, our guidance system shut down uh, before re-entry. And uh, we ended up, um, IBM was, they, it was a computer problem, and IBM uh, flew their, uh, the Federal Systems Division president flew the IBM plane into Patrick, and, uh, and we got that thing back about 3 o'clock one morning, or I guess the night after the launch. Uh, they took the computer out on the recovery ship and, uh, and helicoptered it into Patrick. And, uh, and I went with it. Uh, and the, the IBM president and, uh, and somebody else. And we took it uh, back to, to uh, Binghamton. And they started dissecting that thing and to see if they could find anything wrong with it. And, and they, uh, they couldn't find a friggin' thing. Yeah. And so somebody come up with a great idea of, okay, we'll strip the wiring out of the spacecraft there and we'll investigate every bit of the wiring to see if there was a short or a, an open splice or, or something in the harness there. And I thought, well, you, and, and, and that's the time I went to work on, on uh, at 3 o'clock Monday morning because we were supposed to launch at 9. And I went to work at 3 o'clock that morning, and I didn't come home for two weeks. Because I, I got in the air about IBM plane at 3 o'clock that night, and I went, went up there, and I slept in their first aid room. They had a shower and bed and everything in there and, uh, while they were working on this thing. But uh, they, uh, if, if you undid that wire bundle, you were destroying any, any possibility of finding out what the hell happened to this thing that caused that computer to shut down? Uh, you know, you, you, you're getting rid of the evidence, and, uh, and IBM knew you were getting rid of the evidence, and so I, I but, but I couldn't stop them, uh, and so I called Walt, and uh, Walt was was Arabian's counterpart uh, there that had good sense, and uh, and I explained the situation to him, and he called IBM, and by damn that that uh, what they were about to do was halted <laughs> right there. But he was the kind of guy that uh, that you could get something done there. He didn't raise his voice. He just said, this, "But but I don't remember him actually standing there." But yes, he was he was certainly. Uh, and I don't know how they exactly they got around all that, but that was above my pay grade. But uh, I, I remember the incident. Yeah. Well, you're talking about the wire bundles. Limb three came down in baskets. Okay. We tried to stop that. And of course, George Lowe was the guy that accepted it, and Rocco was there with him. But we got the polarity fixture. We got so many problems, so many modifications. We couldn't test anymore. We couldn't mod anymore. Gave a big presentation to Sam Phillips. They canceled that mission. That's what caused Apollo 8. Okay. The Apollo 8 was not part of the program. Okay. Because the Lem 3 rendezvous with a, key, a CSM with McDivitt and guys was on schedule. Okay, yeah. And there we were with nothing. So I, Phillips canceled I, it. And then they'd already been talking about maybe let's go to the moon because they could see the problems at Kennedy. Yeah. The command service module was good except they didn't have the right tankage or the right software. So they sort of took it apart there in the highway. Put it back together, and Lim 3 died. <laughs> but part of it was the range range rate meter, and it, of course it used the rendezvous radar and the landing radar for that one meter. Okay, yeah. And it kept going into the goal, which was the end of the tape. They finally figured out one of the problems we had. The bundle that came across just above the where the commander was in this area here mm -hmm. was a table that came around and fed that whole instrument panel. Okay. Just full of EMI. Yeah. Crawling. Oh, oh, I can imagine. <laughs> now they came down and they created a loose wire bundle that bypassed that whole damn set of wires. They call it the White Knight. They put the White Knight in there loose, worked perfect. 
so we couldn't tie it back together again. It's just too much crap on it. It would have worse and worse the closer they get, pretty soon they touch and they never work. That's right. Yeah. But I, thought, I thought you guys were a part of that activity as far as trying to figure out how are we going to get around this. And somebody finally, finally said, let's just bypass the whole mess. You know, it, it's not weight critical for that much. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, we were saving ounces on that lunar module. <laughs> so that how would this just bypass the whole damn thing? <laughs> one, one of many problems we had. Uh, you know, we on the. Uh, but he uh, talked about those battery problems. Uh, those big Eagle Pitcher batteries we had on the lunar module. Yeah. When we went 90 degrees in the altitude chamber, they all leaked. You're kidding. That little battery acid all over the descent stage and the altitude chamber. Up the dam. All that crap. I didn't know Jeez, that. how'd they miss that? Well, Boy, that's because the, they all, they did everything. They did everything up the right, yeah. Up right. Yeah. And all of a sudden you put them up like yeah. this. Yeah, but I'm surprised the Eagle Picture guys, they, they were pretty good. They were as surprised as we were. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <so cool. laughs> well, you don't talk about that loose water bottle curves there. The, uh, remember the horizon sensor on Mercury? No. All right. Well, he, this uh, this was uh, he's up in the nose cone, and it, it looked at the horizon, and uh, uh, it was a uh, I don't know what the sensor was, but anyway, it it would uh, uh, scan across, and it would tell you where the horizon was. There. It was a light sensor. Photo sensor. Uh, no, I think I think it was uh, was infrared maybe. Could have been. I don't know. I, I don't know. But at the uh, Anyway, the thing would show you where the horizon was. Well, but it was really sensitive. Yeah. And so uh, it was every time they, they would turn on, a, uh, I think it was a radar transponder up there or something. Every time they would turn that on, the horizon sensor would just go crazy. They were mounted there together. And, and, we, and, and it was, we were scheduled to, 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 uh, to go to the pad real quick. We were in the, in the hangar rest. And, uh, and we, we were messing around there one night and somebody said we need some shielding, and somebody in their lunch bucket had some kitchen uh, 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 rental wrap, and, and we took that damn rental wrap and wrapped it around that the, the entry cable going down the horizon sensor. We launched that way. Hell, <laughs> what is wrong with it? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> but I go back to show when you go into um, Challenger and Columbia. How was forty five involved in? The aftermath of that. I wasn't involved then. I was, I, I'm retired. Hmm. I was Michelin in charge at that time. But yeah, I was. Yeah, I wasn't involved. As a matter of fact, I remember when they launched the thing. <laughs> I was going to Orlando for something. I forgot what. But I remember that. I'm challenging. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I forgot you had been retired that long. Oh yeah. You retired what seventy? I don't know. Seven? Seventy-five. What was the What was the last mission you were involved in from a MER standpoint? One going to the moon, probably. I thought you were involved Maybe. in STS one. Well, yes, I think I think so. <coughs> But the, the one that sticks in my head is, is landing on the moon. Yeah, it, it, it's good. yeah you were no, you were quite a while after that. Yeah, yeah. But there was it was Skylab stuff and all. Well, Skylab was we we, we launched in seventy three. See, because whatever the, and, uh, whatever. Oh, the, were you still working when when uh, when uh, Skylab came in? Yes. Okay. That, yeah, because that, that I, was, yeah, I, I flew same, down here to, I've never seen a launch, you know, so I flew my airplane down here to see a launch, and that's when Kraft <laughs> called me up, we, Raven, come on, where you at? We need you. <laughs> okay, now how about the, when it was going to decay, and were you still working then? When Skylab, Skylab decayed in in 79, <clears throat> when it re-entered and burned up. Have a Skylab? Uh-huh. Do you remember parts of it hit right off Australia? 
Oh, wait a minute, yeah, okay. Were you still working then? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because you, you know, those big old yeah. control moment gyros. Yeah. Well, they when they were going to bring it back in, hell, I don't remember now when they when it was shut down, probably 74 or 5, whenever it was, and and uh, they, somebody said, hey, parts of this thing, you know, that, that dang rotor on those control oh, yeah, moment remember, gyros, yeah, so that they might did. survive, and yeah. it did, as a matter of fact, but they, they predicted it might. And it was it was going to hit over Australia, parts of uh, the beach of Australia or close by. Yeah, they and they remember that. they want to remember they wanted to reorient, and it says, well, have, can we do we have any power left? Can we do it? And so they measured the thing, and they had had uh, a, a bit, and uh, we dug the uh, the uh, procedures and prints out and everything, and and figured out there that they still had enough. It wasn't uh, we didn't have hardly anything. It took three days to run them up to get the wheels in motion, yeah. and uh, and once we got them going, well, they then they reoriented the thing, and that's the way it came back in, and it uh, uh, nearly all of the debris went in the ocean there off, but there was a few things that hit the beach there in, in well, Australia. Part of that hit a, a guy's ranch. Yeah, and they, and they went out to get it, and he wouldn't have it. Yeah. I but a gun on He says, it's my property. So I my remember. Property. Here's my place. I remember that story, yeah. yeah they had to leave him with whatever the hell it was. Didn't he sell that? What, didn't he get he, a lot of money for that? He did. I forget what he got for it. I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. It was, it was buried up and he dug it out. Dropped the damn thing on my property. <laughs> But you had you had retired or about that time, or you were yeah, still working? I, I, yeah, I remember a little bit, but I, I, I think I was probably retired. Okay, all right. Now, yeah. when did you move down here? What? When did you move down here to Cape? 1980. Okay, well, we, we brought that thing That's back right. in 79. Yeah. And you did you move that back here right after you retired or, or shortly after? Did I do what? Did you move back to the, the here to the Cape shortly after you yeah, retired? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rocklow, Rocklow hired me as a technical advisor to the president. Of I didn't Rockwell. know that. Yeah. What did you give him good advice? Well, first thing, we had a meeting with the Air Force, telling him they didn't have to do some stuff that they were doing at at, uh, <coughs> at, at Vandenberg, you know. <laughs> and, and I remember. Who was the president of Rockwell? Oh, I don't remember. I'll really think of his name in a minute, but anyway. It, it, I, I told him, yeah, we didn't know to do his whole talk. He said, well, I'm going to go tell the Air Force that we're going to have a meeting with him. So we, we jumped in this limousine. We went up to the Air Force, you know, had a meeting with the generals, you know, all that. I bet that went across. And, 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 yeah, and uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. He says, uh, you know, a general, one of the generals says, oh, oh yeah, well, boy, we, 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 we could get fired or something for doing something like that. <laughs> so, you know, that has something to do with the politics of the money, you know, between the Air Force and, and the rest of it. But anyway, the, the, uh, what the hell was his name? I'll take a minute. That wasn't the same guy that was there during the Apollo, was it? Yeah, he was involved with Apollo, president. Yeah, he and, he and Aaron were good buddies. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think of his name in the yeah. minute. You get But anyway, he, he says to the general, you know, well, that's what makes two star generals three star generals. <laughs> I thought I'd die. <laughs> well, how long did you work for them down here? Until they changed the contract, probably a couple of years, maybe more than that. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. So At least a couple of years. That would have been in the early '80s then. 1980. 1980s when I came here. I think. Okay. So, so you were you were you were actually all four retired in '82 or three then. Oh yeah, well, Rockwell, NASA, I retired from NASA, I think in 79. I think in 79 is when I retired from NASA. Okay. 
Now tell me about when John Young came on the fourth floor as basically the safety guy or whatever. Did you interact with John when he was up there putting out all the young memos, the young grims? I, uh, not directly. But yeah, it, it, yeah, John Young was doing a bunch of stuff, but I was in the middle of other stuff. He used to entertain us a lot with those young grams he would send out. Yeah. They all made sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was he was all right. John Young was good. Yeah, the, ast the astronauts, I have various feelings about different ones. Some of them very good, and some of them not with the paper to print well, on. Yeah. <laughs> John John was a, was a good one. He's he's a sharp yeah, he dude, man. Good, yeah, yeah. He, Armstrong was sharp. Uh, they're uh, yeah. Most of the one I'm thinking of now. <coughs> he was uh, he became uh, vice president of uh, one of the airlines, Capital Airlines, Eastern Airlines, Borman, Borman, Borman. Yeah, Borman. Yes. Now, yeah, he, he would whatever you would tell him to do, uh, why, what not. He went along with it. He didn't he, he didn't give me any bullshit or anything. Others were worried about piddling things, you know. <laughs> I tell you, after Grissom lost his spacecraft, he'd give you a lot of bullshit. And uh, any kind of, he, he uh, his attitude totally just changed after that thing. He, Scott was all right, too. They? Yeah. They, Scott. Yeah. Some of them, well, I would say half and half. <laughs> Well, let's see. After every flight, you know, we, they, I'd have uh, the astronauts, you know, we had a session, kind of either that lasted a day or two days or something like that. Debrief? At 45, where they'd come and all the system guys would come from all over, you know, mm -hmm. the ones that were in the flight. Yeah. And yeah. discuss any detail we want right yeah. then and there, what they did or what they didn't do and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. So we did all that there. But that happened after the flight sometime. Yeah. Those sessions paid off. Oh yeah. Yeah, man, we we had similar thing on on the Mercury Gemini, and you you learned a whole lot. I think we used to <coughs> we used to call a meeting with the crew in the backup crew a week or two before flight, <coughs> and we'd have NASA system guys come in, and they would go over everything in their system for that particular mission with the astronauts, so that they all knew that there's a peculiarity. And on um, Borman's flight, not Borman, Lovell. On Lovell's flight, I set the meeting up with, you know, their crew support guy, it was Dave Ballard, one of those guys. And I said, okay, we're going to meet in the training building such and such a time. And I took the day off. I had something to do. Well, the astronauts all went to the crew training building. All the NASA guys went to the training building for NASA, which was over by the headquarters. <laughs> and they were sitting around waiting for these hour or two, and I was like, man, what the hell is wrong here? And somebody finally made a call, and I had failed to say training building or NASA training building, and everybody just showed the wrong damn place. But I had created a dumb shit award at that time. So when an astronaut did something stupid in a test, I got a dumb shit award for him. I got a nice dumb shit award from Lovell and Fred Hayes and all <laughs> them guys. <laughs> uh, the best awards I ever got. <laughs> uh, Most of those guys, they're a lot of fun. That Conrad group was really a lot of fun. We always had a beer ball game sometime before they flew. And I figured we got to get an edge on these guys. Somehow we got to, they're, they're perfect. So I got some good looking gal. I, I must have talked to at least 10 girls when I got one. I said, I want you to come and dress in the skimpiest outfit you have to be our hand catcher. So I don't care if we catch a ball or not. You know, be there. And when they come up, I want you to reach up and pinch them on the butt. <laughs> so I get one more of them while you're at bed. So I finally got this gal to say, yes, she would do it. So here we are, here comes Pete. He's coming up the back, right off the bat. He reaches up there and she reaches up and pinches his butt. He turns around and looks at her. He hits the ball, 
He reaches and picks her up, throws her over his shoulder, and runs the bases with her. <laughs> Comrade did. Right. <laughs> I mean, they must have been in a hundred to one. <laughs> I'm such garbage. <laughs> but they had a great time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, let's see. If you look back at all of the issues you were involved in, what do you think was the most challenging to come up most with? Challenging? Most challenging? Most challenging. Come up with a solution. <clears throat> well, I should, there's many of them, but the one recently, well, I should say recently, that had to do with one of the last flights on the shuttle that they were supposed to launch, I forgot. Uh, they were going to have to delay two months on the delivery because the computer that Odetix was making was not finished yet. So that held up the, uh, the money for everything. Okay, now that the program just had to stop because they couldn't launch two months from now because Odetix would not be able to finish the computer but all the recording that they transmitted and everything else, you know, yeah. and the electronics that he was making. And uh, <coughs> ended up in a, I said, well, let me see what the hell is on that damn thing. So I looked at all the instrumentation they were monitoring and whatnot. I said, God damn, man, I can knock off most of this stuff. It's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> that meeting with the drawings, full-size drawings on the wall. <laughs> and started to go through each one of the parameters. You know, a lot of the if a light would come on just to show you the switches on. Yeah. I said, what the hell do you need that light for? What the guy is going to do without it uh, eliminated? Oh yeah, so it was 200 parameters I dropped, and as a result, they was able to launch when they were supposed to launch and just didn't instrument the other mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. And yeah. that was probably the last thing I did. Now looking back, you, you mentioned some of the astronauts. Who do you think was the most difficult? The most difficult? That flew or not? I mean, the, that the, flew. That flew. Some of them were very good, like Lovell was very good, I thought. Uh, Yeah, some of them were very quiet and didn't say anything, you know. They, were, they kind of go along whatever was there, they understood the least they said. Other, others would make a fuss of stuff that was not with fussable. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Now, I don't think I'd classify anyone out. How about any that didn't fly? The what? Any that didn't fly. Well, there's one I, I think he wanted to make some change and went all the way up to Kraft somehow or other, you know. And Kraft told him, well, if you, if you can't take that, then you're not going to fly. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, we, we, little pillin things, you know, yeah. like, like unnecessary stuff. Well, uh, Grissom wanted rudder pedals. Yeah, Grissom... Rudder <laughs> pedals? Damn right, in Jiminy. Yeah, he wanted rudder pedals. No, I, I didn't... <laughs> to control the light. Of the <laughs> seven, <laughs> yeah, of the, of the seven, I think the, the one that I would say is more old, old womanish than anything else was Glenn. Uh, yeah. That's what I mean. I, it, 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 yeah. yeah. He was, he was worried about little details of it. Yeah. But I mean, I could understand it though. I mean, I could understand. Yeah. I could put myself in his posture. Yeah, but some of those were not, as I call them, life threatening. I mean, mission threatening. No, no. There was no. none that was, I, I would say, yeah. crucial. Yeah. What I would call. Uh, um, 
storm breakers or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Grissom wanted those rudder pedals. They they were remember the uh, the wing that were they uh, at first. Yeah. Jim just came yeah. back on the wing and skids and what have you. Well, he, that's when he wanted the rudder pedals. We're going to have skids. We're going to have a wing. He's going to guide this thing. He's going to fly it like an airplane. And, uh, and of course, that all went away finally. Uh, the, but he. Uh, yeah, I remember one thing. Stafford, Stafford, when he flew with uh, Rudy McDivitt, and uh, he flew on the, one of the uh, Apollo, but they didn't land on the moon. They just went around the moon. Yeah, they, yeah, that was Apollo ten. Yeah, about ten, whatever. Like yeah, that. I was on a panel with him that, last uh, summer. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Stafford was complaining about the lights. It was indicating there were five thrusters of firing or something. But when he was in the capsule. Before flight, you know, and sitting there and the gravity and whatnot, you'd see the lights as one thing, and if you would get there in zero G, where well, you would be floating, well, you'd see the light and it was indicating that the lights were in the fire or something like that. I forgot what it was. I remember that light, and I remember that position. I remember going in the cabin and seeing that. I said, well, yeah, this is a question of where the hell you're sitting. You know, what do you want? You want to hire? <laughs> Which was, which is a basic problem, by the way, if you, yeah. you, because your position's different, so the oh, whole yeah. bunch of stuff you see different. Some would be very critical. Was it you that suggested the lights on the Agena for the docking? Oh yeah. Okay, I thought so. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that was the one. Said yeah, we well, don't yeah. need any of that. What do you mean, <laughs> bring it, connect them, bring it across? We ain't gonna bring them across. Look out the window. You got a window there. Yeah, look out <laughs> the window and see a light. <laughs> yeah, it, it made sense. <laughs> That's what we did. <laughs> and the damn thing blew up <laughs> before we ever got it up there. But <laughs> oh, that was the, about about the uh, uh, the, uh, the the what is it, the heat shield that opened up? You know, uh -huh. remember, remember they had that open up? Yeah, the alligator the fire pet uh, pyros that had a fire yeah. in order to boom boom. And they connected up, they got the wires crossed. Exactly. Well, that's a design problem. They shouldn't have been able to fit either one. Yeah. Okay, right. they're right that's there. Right. There should that's be right. such that one that only goes the right place. Yeah. I mean, you can't put it in the wrong place. Well, you remember the But clock. that's what the problem was at. Well, remember the clocking on the connectors? They didn't, we didn't have that when they first started out. We didn't have them. Yeah. They, worked yeah. With, they, didn't, they yeah. didn't have the clocking. Yeah. And that's exactly the slip to oh, keep yeah. from doing what you said, the crossing the wire. Oh yeah, yeah. no way you can prevent people from not doing that. I don't know which way, you know, pick yeah. something up, you know, that, that fits it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it doesn't fit, you oh, yeah, push that, it a little that, harder. That was a, that was a, that was a tough blow, I'll tell you. <laughs> Talk about your JSC center directors. Who was the best one as far as you were concerned? George Lowe. I always admired him. Very who good. Was, who was the worst? Good. Big David, I'd say. <laughs> Why was he so bad? I don't know. I just could you know, people, people are like they are. You know, I'm like I am. I mean, I say about things, I think about things, everybody thinks about different stuff. I mean, the, every head isn't the same, not wired the same. Yeah, that's right. Different. I mean, you're a different height than I am, you're a different weight than I am. So are you. You're not the same as him. As this is the astronaut McDavid you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, program manager. He was, what did what you ask? Center director? Center director. He oh, was, no, 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 no. He was he, program, he wasn't he was center program director. manager. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Who the hell was? Who, who was there? He started out being the center director, so he finally retired. It was Gilruth. Gilruth, yeah. Gilruth. Get a little t different personality altogether, mm. and I think I mean I, I never dealt much with him, you know, directly. But I, I think he was uh, a, a, a reasonably good organizer, and he would understand technical stuff very well.
those are the only two that I was involved with. Uh, how about Aaron Cohen? Was he center director when you were still? No, but Aaron is all right, but he's you now he's uh, It surprised me. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it surprised me when you became he became semi weak. I would say, uh, what do I would say? He's kind of like uh, Walt Camperin. He's just too nice a guy. He's a nicer guy, yeah. He, he's yeah. not one to be ruined. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he's not a, a forcer. Well, like, no. I would say Chris Craft is an enforcer. Yeah, Chris Craft is more roof on you. He's <laughs> good logical head on Craft. He doesn't understand maybe some stuff, but uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he has a good head. Pretty good, yeah. He reminded me of kind of of Yardley. John yeah, Yardley was that way. Yardley understood everything, I tell you. Yardley yeah, said certain things he didn't understand. No, but he would Certain part of physics he didn't understand. He would the next day if it would. Oh, he would, he would go learn. Yes, he, he would. He would go learn. If there's yes, something he, he didn't would. know, he would go find out You're about it. You're not kidding. He, he would not just accept. I remember a, a... Yeah, he was a very good director. Oh, we had a... Yeah. Some kind of a problem. I don't know what it was now. Something about the orbit. Way back, this is before the first launch on, on Mercury, and the first uh, uh, orbital launch. And uh, I wasn't involved, but the, anyway, it was an orbital mechanics problem. And the there were two conflicting bits of, of uh, recommendations coming to Yardley, and uh, they each side made their argument, and. Uh, he said, okay, at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'll reconvene and, and, uh, and we'll, we'll resolve this. 9 o'clock the next morning, he went through each argument in great detail there. And then he'd go through the other one in great detail, tell them exactly what they said the day before and why, and here's, here's the physics behind it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then he said, and this is what we're going to do, and this is why. And I found out from his daughter years later that he, he went home and he opened his textbooks and man, he, he bowled up on orbital mechanics that night. Yeah, he, he did. Somebody uh, was telling me what the, uh, it was something he, he wasn't understanding, some part of his, I forgot where it was. Yeah. But anyway, uh, he, he would go study. Yes. He'd study. Matter of fact, remember the lightning situation we had one that, and Yardley was, he was up in the headquarters. NASA had him doing something like that. I don't know where he was. He was program manager. He was program, program manager, manager of the manned space program. I yeah. remember, yeah. yeah. And I was involved with this lightning situation, you know. And uh, uh, so one time yeah, he came down here, and I remember meeting with him in, the, in the, my uh, motel room, you know. Oh, yeah. And explaining to them about lightning and all that kind of stuff, because he had to prove something where yeah, we were. But yeah, he was. Uh, I I ended in the face with him quite a bit, a lot of problems because he was he was involved with Murphy when it first started, you know. Oh yeah, he was. A See, so he, he, he was the so, uh, I, so I interfaced with him a lot. <laughs> engineering manager, engineering manager. He's hey, oh look, <laughs> Scotty Simpkinson was down here, <laughs> and uh, oh, who was the other guy? Anyway. What do you call it? I like your statement there. Weak, weak representation mm -hmm. of NASA. And had been for Yardley, we never would have gotten off the ground, I tell you. He, oh, no, he would, yeah. Yeah. He, he no, you had, you had some good guys. At, at, oh, yeah. I'll tell you, see, you had some at, at, at uh, McDonald and Douglas, but I, I didn't like. And one, uh, well, I'll think of his name right now. Yeah, they should have fired him. Bob C. Bob C., yeah. <laughs> not, 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 You're kidding Bob, me. Some, uh, <laughs> no, not seat, the Bob seat. Uh, seat. Bob seat. Seat, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you remember him? Do I yell? Yes, I remember him. Oh, yeah. Boy, you remember him, boy. don't you, Joey? <laughs> I was right, ready to take a sword to him. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he lives here in, in Cocoa Beach or Titus. I got to tell you a little place. story about Jimmy Three, <laughs> and we had a computer problem. We, something was wrong, and I was the one for power sequential. 
that they had got to go troubleshoot why, what was wrong with this computer. Well, I, I sort of already knew what was wrong with it. We had steering commands coming out of Gemini. Yeah. And I was pretty sure my counterpart the night before had blown the damn circuits. Oh. So I was in charge of troubleshooting. Well, they didn't want to remove the computer. They thought, well, this, that's not important. It's only important for certain things not going to happen. Bob C. arranged for me and my wife to go to a hockey game with Mr. Mack, his wife, and Bob C. and his wife. I'm just a damn NASA peon system engineer, and here's the head of McDonald, and I'm sitting here next to him and his wife at a damn hockey game. And I said, what the hell am I doing here? And it, it struck me all of a sudden, they, they don't want me to take that computer out. Next day I went in, finished my troubleshooting, said, pull that goddamn computer now. <laughs> they, he wouldn't even speak to me for a week. I never saw Mr. Mack.